Hello there, uh, I was wondering, uh, do you sell G-strings? Uh, G-strings? Yeah. As in guitar strings, yeah? Sorry? As in the guitar string, yeah? Well, yeah, nothing else, mate, yeah. The, the, the guitar strings, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course you do, mate, yeah. Oh, brilliant, what, what kind do you sell? Uh, well, loads of kinds, it says, uh, depends what gauge it is and everything, like... Do you sell, like, tight gauge ones? Uh, what gauge ones? Like tight gauge ones. Tight gauge? No, nothing like that. Uh, Do you have different colour ones? Different colour ones? No, there won't be any different colour ones, I'm afraid. So you don't have, like, pink ones or... Ah, uh, no pink ones. What What are they made out of? What What, what sort of main material? It's uh, steel. Steel? steel are, yeah. they, are they, like, greasy? Uh, no, they're not greasy. Would, uh... Would you recommend greasing them up before playing? Oh, you what? Hey, do you want to say that again? Hello. Uh, yeah, sorry. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, yeah. I was recommend. Would you, uh... Would you recommend greasing them up before playing? Yeah, why not? I'm sure, I'm sure that, would, uh, that would make it more comfortable. All right, thanks very much, mate. Okay. All right, oh, I'll uh, pop by sometime. Yeah, sure, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. All right, I'll pick up my greasy G-string. <laughs> oh, yeah, greasy G-strings. <laughs> I'll see you soon, mate. <laughs> bye. Uh, bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> I've always enjoyed talking to scary adults. And according to Delancey, they're open to debate. They outright refused to talk to me on camera when I slid in their DMs, busy washing their hair. Vibrant. Uh, oh. oh and these seven years will be pretty done. Instead, they suggested I visit the community engagement place they set up in the shopping centre. The main point of reference for finding it being opposite Cafe Nova a social enterprise that provides training for disadvantaged people. But Cafe Nova closed down a month later due to the uncertainty of the shopping centre's future. So how do Delancey expect me to find them? Unbelievably, Lendlease replied to my tweet, and I was having a promising chat with a media man until I said, It's taken the form of quite a negative, uh, view of it at the moment, so I guess it would be interesting to kind of hear from the, the people themselves doing it, to kind of understand why. And yeah, they're not in the film. Oakmain don't have Twitter, so I emailed them. But I sort of understand why they'd be camera shy after one of their estate agents was secretly filmed advising potential buyers how to avoid paying tax through a complex scheme involving shell companies abroad, which meant they could sell their houses for more money and quicker. And thus we would be able to negate um, I tried emailing Delancey. They refused again, but I had to know. Do the local community or their profits come first? What do I want from my service provider or from my advisor? And that is that I'm looking for a proprietor's view of the world. So I'm not looking for a broker's perspective. I'm looking for someone who will say to me, I would buy this, and in fact, by the way, I will buy this with you if you really want me to. Does this strike you as someone who understands a working class community? Cares about the people? is a human being and not a lizard person. I'm just kidding. I know Jamie feels emotion. He's terrified of paying tax. I think people are too hard on him. Jamie's just copying his daddy. The god of UK property, Sir John Ripblatt. It's a major investment. 
friend of the royal family, and Damien Hurst, and former CEO of British Land, who in 2011 were revealed to have one of the highest percentages of business stuff registered in tax havens out of the entire FTSE 100 list. I mean, yeah, he has billions of pounds at his disposal, registered the shopping centre site in the British Virgin Islands, was wrapped up in some shady shit with Tory MP Andrew Mitchell, tried to avoid paying stamp duty on the £65 million property purchase. But Jamie's the victim here. He's a member of the corporate tax survivors community. Thank God he has such a big support network. It may just be the best investment they ever made. And at least he has a big house in the country you can escape to on the weekends. Yeah. I like to make money get turned. I like to make money get. What the fuck's a boot room? And why is it bigger than the living room? There is a huge risk of trying to unsympathetically land a new shiny town centre into a place that already exists. And, and the skill for us as a developer is to knit it in an authentic way into the fabric that already exists. Do you think the developers care? They care about their uh, profit margins. I, that's such a, I don't think that's a, what kind of question is that? <laughs> you don't think the developers care? No, no, they don't, no. They, oh, they care about their money. That's one thing. They care about the money. Do you think the developers care about people? Uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's, they're, they're in it to make money. Let's not be um, naive about their, what, they, what they want out of the scheme. They want to, to maximise what the profit they can make. There's, there's, one, there's one purpose for a private company, and that's to make a profit. Do you think the developers care about people? <laughs> um, so, yeah, no one's really buying the whole we care thing, Delancey. We've been in, in meetings with the developers in the same table. You know, it's almost like um, uh, like a bad comedy, uh, seeing how one side of the table was bringing uh, all of these arguments based on people in need, people in need of social housing, sole traders caring for the family, the elderly, the female sole traders uh, of, of, of uh, migrant ethnic background. And all of these arguments, which are uh, more on the social and cultural value, and on the other side of the table receiving uh, figures of the millions of pounds uh, in profit that they need to secure in order to go ahead. Being in a position where they have to say to lots and lots of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people, that, sorry, we can't just have 17.5% profit and provide the affordable homes that you need. We need 20%. As if, you know, you're talking about a no man's land, a, a, a place that is empty. It's, mm. it's shocking to, to be, you know, arguing in, in such a different uh, metrics. I'm sure that they are all charming people and you could have a great drink with them um, and they've got some great jokes that they can share with you and I'm sure that a lot of them have children who they care about very much and they're great parents. But I do think that the kind of proximity that you have to this big money is mm. I think quite damaging to a person and I think it kind of warps your ideals and the way you look at things. So I don't think I don't think I don't think developers are evil. They're under the influence of capital and capital makes people do very odd things, um, very inhumane things. Perhaps you think we're just a bunch of cynical leftist cuck snowflakes and that the developers do care. But don't take it from us. Jamie Ripblatt puts it best. Ritz Blatt explains that his business is to make money. As soon as development becomes an emotional experience, it moves away from business principles. Our skill set is to be dispassionate and see where we can add value. It starts and finishes with the money. I would buy this, and in fact, by the way, I will buy this with you if you really want me to. That's a really bad clip to have online. Hey, Jamie, 
What do you think about going halves with me on Bella the Elf fantasy sex doll? I would buy this, and in fact, by the way, I will buy this with you if you really want me to. It's a major investment. MIPIM UK and MIPIM together are invaluable to our business. In a trailer cut quicker than a Michael Bay movie, and where the only non-white woman is reduced to saying the word Diversity I learnt about MIPIM, the UK's largest and most insightful property conference, where developers rub shoulders and shake out change. I wanted to know why children say Nanny, when I grow up, I want to be a property developer. So I went along. Are you against the idea of regeneration in general? I don't think you can be against the idea of regeneration in general, but you just can't get away from the fact that regeneration has a very specific meaning. There is a whole lexicon uh, built around regeneration, a whole rhetoric, if you like, about what it's going to provide. There is a whole uh, industry of uh, consultants make a living out of regeneration. Uh, going forward, as they say, um, who depends upon it going forward, who depends upon it happening. There's a whole infrastructure uh, pushing this forward. So I'm definitely against that regeneration, yeah, as a regeneration. And that is the only regeneration we have, really. As the day drew to a close, something occurred to me. Does everyone always drink so much at these things? Is every decision in the world made by people wearing suits with a drink in their hand? Or even a fidget spinner? Remember fucking fidget spinner? It's a world disconnected from reality. It was a party. There was even a DJ. As I ate the beautiful free food, I stared at the laughing, smiling crowd. Is this how you make friends as an adult? You spend so much time thinking about numbers and square footage and buildings. You crave any human interaction? Is it all an excuse to have a bit of fun? To let go of that false reality you created for yourself that you're a real grown-up, you've had to keep up since the day you left uni? Is this all just an escape from the banality and meaninglessness of human existence? Oh Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, at a time when even now uh, councils don't have the resources, or say they don't have resources, to, to provide homes themselves. Councils feel forced into these deals. Now some are more, uh, some go into these deals with more alacrity than others, and more naivety than others, certainly Salak has. It isn't just developers, they rely on policy makers, they rely on decision makers, council officers, they rely on councillors. Councillors 
completely believe in it, uh, even now. 